Hello, everybody. It's time for the Wolfman Podcast. Everybody grab a... Well, you should have grabbed the snack already. It's too late. Yeah, if, you, if you're hungry, it's your fault. Now you got to wait till the end of the show. Yeah. So, hope you went to the bathroom. Just generally. Yeah, this is a good idea. Uh, hi. Hey. Uh, thanks for being here. A uh, big, huge show today. That usually means it's not. No, nothing <laughs> happened. Um, I do want to go over what you put at the top, which I think is good. Uh, did I put that? I at don't the top? know if you did it on purpose, but it was at the top, and I feel like okay. it's a good main topic. Uh, yeah, definitely, especially given you know what we often talk about on the show. Uh, Windows. My, we t- made a big stick about this a while ago, but mm-hmm. uh, it looks like it's available for Xbox insiders. Yes. And I would like to try this. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is Microsoft rolling out a better way to use Windows on a handheld. Yes. Uh, I have my ROG Ally X here. And I've been trying for the last like five minutes. (laughs) It will not boot into Windows. (laughs) (laughs) It keeps booting into Bazite. I don't know why. PC gaming. It won't open the BIOS. I'm I'm trying to open the BIOS. It won't do it. Don't you have like any number? Don't you have any number of... PC gaming handhelds. I you want to do this, this one. Okay. I really don't know why. Oh wait. Anyway, uh, there's other things we got to talk. Yeah, about. there's other things we got to talk about. Things. Sony, uh, it's not Sony. Sega, uh, D list. One of my favorite Sonic games, but not really. We'll talk about it. Uh, the developers of PUBG are big time heroes. Um, stay tuned to find out why. Uh, f- Limited Run Games is re-releasing a classic SNES game in a new fancy way. Ooh. And many more. Uh, Also, last weekend, we went to Long Island Retro. You're wearing a shirt. Yeah, yes, I am. This is the shirt they give to the guests. Hi. I was a guest. (laughs) I was going to bring the bag that they gave us, that the shirt came in because I'm a guest. Um... (laughs) I was going to bring the bag they we, gave us. For the record, we were not last year. No. <laughs> we so were just there. Yeah. Uh, I was going to bring the bag they gave us with the games I purchased there, oh. but I forgot. So now we got nothing. What did you about. get? I, I got more than I anticipated. I got, I got these socks. <laughs> And that's these. I should have went back for the nicer copy of Win Back, and I regret not doing that. Yeah, you told me that there was a Win Back. I looked out for twenty bucks. Was pretty. You looked at the one. Yeah, and I was like, "Ooh, Win Back! I want that." And I looked at it, and I was like, "Ah, it's not good." And then you said it's not in good condition. Then you said there was one in the back. Yeah, I feel like walking over there, so I just left. (laughs) (laughs) There was not a single thing that I was interested in. Yeah, I like grabbed a couple of things here and there. I got Disney Infinity. 3.0 3.0 because I figured that's a good way to get my kids into games and I bought a lot, couple of the little figurines and the, the base which was like dirt that's cheap. That's interesting. Yeah like a lot of those the most expensive Disney Infinity figurine I found was Spider-Man for $15. Everyone else was five bucks which is pretty good all things yeah. considered. The base was only eight. The The games were pretty reasonably priced so I got that. I got I found Resident Evil 4 on Xbox One, the original version of Resident Evil 4. So my collection is growing ever okay. so much. Uh, if you came to our panel on Saturday, you know, on Friday, you know, I got Superman Shadow of Apocalypse for PS2, allegedly the best Superman game ever made. And then I got the, somebody had Superman Returns for the Xbox 360, which my friend Matt said was the best Superman game ever made. So now I'm going to do some experimenting because you can make a the good mo- Superman the game. The movie game? Yes. Okay. You can make a good Superman game. It's just nobody's done it yet. Uh, I was looking at, you know, old Game Boys and stuff. Yeah. Uh, there was one guy who had a bin of junk, uh, but I didn't feel like talking to him and none of them had prices on it, so I didn't even yeah. bother. <laughs> um, I'm a little uh, upset because Game Changer Mods is there all the time. Yeah. And they usually have a bin of broken boards. And I don't really know what I'm doing with a board, so I don't really want to like buy a board and then try to figure out how to fix it. Except, uh, I just saw this come up on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. Inside Gadget uh, is now they now have these uh, Mousebite Labs Game Boy DMG color chips uh, okay. or, or chipsets. Apparently, all you need to so Natalie the nerd here explains it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, all you have to do is put on the CPU, RAM, and crystals. You know what a crystal is? 
Uh, but you can essentially just take a broken PCB of a Game Boy right. and fix it with it. You can just put all the important parts onto this. Okay. So uh, I should have gotten some of that. Uh, otherwise, game prices weren't that... Uh, I mean, they've been getting worse. Uh, yeah. Well... I feel like in some cases they're getting worse. In some cases they're getting better. Mm -hmm. Like I saw like um, Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube for like under 70 bucks, which is like, you know, unheard of the past few years. Guitar Hero controllers are coming down in price, which I think is a good sign. I, I, sh I should say uh, there were a couple of decent like uh, DS lights, a couple of yeah. decent Game Boys, uh, but they were like, Ten dollars over what you can get on eBay, uh -huh. and I have all the stuff. Yeah. I need already. I don't need uh, more of this stuff. It's all the same. Thing. Yeah, and like everything else is like, you know, I have most of what I want to play, and like I'm not really looking for anything new. There, anything I get, honestly, is by accident. <laughs> Duke Loto says I picked up a copy of Deadpool for sixty bucks. Didn't you see that for a lot more? I think I saw that for seventy bucks. Oh, okay. Yeah, still a lot of money for Deadpool. Yeah. Uh, some things were crazy, uh, yeah. and I think they take into account if you can't uh, pick up the game anymore. Like Deadpool, yeah. you can't buy digitally right mm -hmm. now. Uh, so also, I saw uh, Sonic uh, Advance, uh, first one, yeah, in the box for a hundred dollars, which is crazy. Yeah, uh, we had a panel; it was pretty good. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming out. If you did, if you didn't come, uh, we would have posted part of it in this video. But uh, the audio was just abysmal, yeah. so uh, <laughs> you will never see it. I'm sorry. Uh, it's kind of phenomenal how bad <laughs> it, it, the audio was. It, it was surprising. There yeah. was a mic in front of us, one mm -hmm. mic that we were passing between the two of us, not plugged into anything. <laughs> yeah. It was a prop, essentially. It was a prop mic. We didn't know. Yeah. I thought, uh, you know, I... I, I the last panel that I did at uh, uh, Too Many Games, uh, we didn't have monitors facing us, but we had speakers facing out. So right. I couldn't hear myself, but I just, you know, I, I was like, oh, okay, it sounds like they could hear me. So it's yeah. fine. So for this, I just assumed, ah, maybe they could hear us, but we were just in a small room. So yeah. people heard us anyway. Um, Mike wasn't plugged into anything. Someone was on a mixing board. <laughs> <laughs> e came in in the middle of it and touched the camera. Yeah. Mike wasn't plugged into the camera. It was... It, it was crazy uh anyway uh thanks for coming out it was good to see a bunch of people uh at, at, on our home turf yes anyway uh thank you to underscore for the 78 months thank you to dante for the 60 months 60 months have a great podcast bob and will thank you S south australia guy thanks for the prime goblins and gunslingers thanks for the three months hey bob i sent you some pre-alpha cards also, do you want to see an animation I'm working on? What, what is a pre-alpha card? I guess, uh, well, pre-alpha means like in gaming terms. Uh, are you, like are you making a build. game? Is that what you're talking about? And where did you send these things? I, I don't know where to look. Weebish, thanks for the prime. Uh, oh, and Farmer Gooch with the $5, just paying his dues. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, let's talk about... Dive right in. Yeah, let's talk about... Microsoft is making its Windows game bar more handheld friendly. And you know what? It's looking. Microsoft is starting to test a new compact version of its game bar with Xbox Insiders today. Similar to the Xbox app on Windows PCs, the game bar is getting its own compact mode that is designed for smaller screens, Windows powered handhelds, and, uh, and even for when you're. Sorry. Uh, the game bar is getting its own compact mode that is designed for smaller screens, Windows powered handhelds, and even for when you're playing on a PC with a controller. With compact game with compact mode enabled, access to widgets and navigation is simplified to ensure you can get access to the content you want as easily as possible, explains Oliver Zhu, uh, executive as uh, senior uh, senior product manager for Xbox Experiences. When using a controller, you can switch between widgets quickly with left and right bumpers. That's uh, LB and RB. Uh, the home the home widget in the compact game bar lets you view any recent or currently running games, and you can even quit games from here too. Ideal if you are using a controller, you can also quickly access widgets, uh, widget options using a, using a controller, and this compact mode or access uh, the widget store 
to get additional features for the game bar. Microsoft is testing this new compact I got into the mode. BIOS. Hooray! I forgot that in the tutorial that I watched, they said you have to mash the volume down button. Okay. You can't just hold it. Okay. A lot of th places online say you have to hold it. I forgot you just, you literally have to just press it right. over and over again. I sat here, I was pressing it for mm -hmm. like a, the, once you started reading the article, I've yeah. been pressing it. I, I, finally, I can hear, I can hear the clicking. <laughs> I finally booted into mm. uh, the, the BIOS. Anyway, I'm sorry. Microsoft is testing this new compact mode for the game bar with Xbox Insiders today, and you can sign up to test it and then enable the new mode under settings. Microsoft has been gradually improving its Xbox app on Windows in recent months, including a compact mode and controller improvements for navigation and launching games. So I've been waiting for this for a while because I yeah. just want to, I want Windows to be a better user experience for, for smaller devices like that. Yeah. Um, because I, there's always like, this is, uh, Asus's, uh, uh, their version of like a little home mm -hmm. screen. Uh, and it works pretty good. Honestly, I think Asus is the best of them all, but I still, every time I boot into this thing, I close it. Right. I don't, I'm usually doing something else in here that yeah. I don't need that for. Uh, if you want to just boot straight into a game, that's great. But, mm -hmm. uh, on other devices, like my Lenovo Legion Go, it doesn't have that great of a home screen experience so i use steam big picture mode right and that works mostly good uh on this i have a whole new os in here to yeah. have a better <laughs> user experience and it works pretty well um there is also a way to have it so when this thing turns on it makes you choose if you want windows or if you want linux right uh, i haven't set that up yet obviously because i thought oh it'll just be easy to get into the bios i just have to remember how to get into the BIOS. uh so this thing Windows has is in beta. They're testing it. It is available to Xbox insiders. Right. And I was like, aren't I an Xbox insider? Are you? I don't have Game Pass. Right. So I don't know if that matters. I don't think it does. Uh, how do I get started with the Xbox insider program? So you can do it on an Xbox or on a Windows device, which is why. That's what that is. Out. I thought I could do it on the website, but you can't. Yeah. Uh, start button. Type in store. I get a keyboard. Or, uh, then select search, enter insider, go to the insider hub, and then you, I guess you download it. Insider hub. It's a, it's a, it's its own app. Oh, I own it. That's good news. You own Xbox Insider. Oh, it says own, but it's not installed. So right. I'll install it. And then that I think that means that I get it. You have to be like accepted. Oh, it says get or install for more information. Right. Blah, blah, blah. So then, oh, what's required to get insider preview? Launch the hub, go to preview, select the preview you want, read the eligibility info, and then go to the details. Okay. So I think I might have it. Nice. Bob, did anyone approach you at Long Island Retro? Hey, you Wolf Den, let me get you in. Smash like in the VPN head? No, uh, that happened to me at a Moe's once, and I got destroyed. That was like right when Smash came out. Previews Doom Eternal PC mod preview. Interesting. So oh, can, that's right, they're adding mod support to that. Yeah, I can do a PAL world update. Okay, Xbox Accessibility Insider League. Game Bar STK development. Is that what they do? I think that's what you want. Right. Developers, try out Game Bar STK preview builds. This ring receives the Game Bar build with the SDK features that are still in development process. Users are may experience serious SDK or Game Bar bugs for a more stable preview version than we recommend the Windows Gaming Flight that includes the regular preview version of Game Bar. Uh, I feel like I want the Windows preview, don't I? Uh, there's nothing about like Game Bar or anything like that. I mean, it says, uh, Game Bar SDK preview. Okay. I mean, I'll hit join. Hey, Wolf Bros, any tips on fixing my parents' marriage? Well, that's it. Um, you're really good. At yeah, that. you gotta leave. 
You're the you, problem. You, you gotta go. There's one common denominator. Yeah. You're tearing them apart. Your registration is complete, okay? All right, there we Open. go. We can see this live. Oh no, this is a completely different thing. <laughs> Look, it's like the thing that like... Oh, uh, okay, yeah, I it see. It pulls up uh, like all of the... You know, it's like an overlay. It's like uh -huh. a weird... Like a weird overlay. Well, I'm glad like they that. made this easy. Well, it's a preview, so right. they, they want to actively discourage people from trying it. Yeah. All right. Um, why does this remind me of Nokia's Windows phone? Are you talking about, like, the tile preview thing? So, I guess what we should clarify is, that, like, the, the Windows device, it's still... A Windows device. Oh yeah, it, I mean I'm <laughs> I'm going through it right now. Well, because what what I mean is like when you boot up the machine, it goes right into Windows, like regular ass Windows, and the game bar is really like in addition to make it like easier to use with a controller and as a handheld. They're still not changing Windows in any substantial way to make it more handheld friendly. Right, so they've done something similar to this in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, re remember, we made like a big oh update. Okay, so we've made a big stink uh, on on the show a few episodes ago because the Xbox app on here had this little this little thing that pulls out, and I can't press it because it wants me to update. There's this little like bar that pulls out, and yeah. that was supposed to make the whole experience way better. So. You can have it so that uh, when the Windows device turns on, it just goes straight into the Xbox app. Right. Uh, right now, I think what I'm doing is I'm updating the Xbox app. So yeah. I had to go into the Insider Hub. I had mm -hmm. to download the Insider Hub first. Yes. I had to then uh, enable previews. Right. I don't even know how necessary that is. Uh, then I go into the Xbox app uh -huh. and update it to, I guess, use those previews. Uh, I'm not taking the... And you know what? I don't think that works. No. Oh. This looks uh, the same. <laughs> there you go. There's so, all waste So time. basically, I have no idea how to uh, join this, this, uh, this preview build. Right. I guess all we can do now is just speculate and think about what it could be. <laughs> well, we have pictures here. Yeah. Uh, is that? Yeah, no, this is, that's not at all what this is. Uh, the Xbox app. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at it. I guess I got to get, like, the preview version of the Xbox app, which I thought I had, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I just found a tab that said join the... Uh... It said, like, join the PC Gamer Insider. And now I just click the button, and now it says uh, pending. Circling. Right. Uh, so I don't know. I might not. I just might not be in the the preview build. Yeah. But anyway, this is an update to the Xbox app. Uh, it'll look like this. It'll be easier to navigate with the controller. Uh, I want it to look more like either Steam Big Picture mode or uh, old school Windows with the tiles. Yeah, Windows Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like it needs like some sort of like portable handheld wrapper. Where yeah. like you you open it and it just immediately boosts into a UI specifically designed for portable gaming. If that means it goes straight into the Xbox app that is specifically formatted for portable gaming, then so be it. But being a being a laptop in a small form factor like isn't really cutting it. Yeah, you know? it's literally uh, a laptop OS. Yeah, we talked about this a couple times on the show back uh, Windows eight when that was yeah. out there. Uh, they were having uh touchscreen laptops and tablets and stuff so yeah. when you turn the the computer on it would just open this tile ui and everyone hated it yeah. but if you're using a tablet wasn't so bad yeah that sort of tile ui that everybody hated would be great with a controller yeah and it, i mean they put it on xbox yeah uh, did people like it on it? It was on Xbox 360 at the end of the life cycle, right? Yeah, and then yeah. it was like... And people liked the blades. Everybody yeah. loved the blades. And then uh, it was on Xbox One, but they've like changed the Xbox user interface so much. It's like 
reminiscent of the the tiles the metro design as it were but like it doesn't really follow that same pattern metro anymore design, that's right yeah and then what we would do is we would just press the start button and it would because that that was the start menu basically. yeah uh is this what it looked like right here that was that's what the xbox one looked like okay didn't yeah. the 360 look very similar? The 360 looked vaguely similar, yeah. You just used... Yeah, uh, that, that one. That's, okay. what, that's what that's what it looked like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, I didn't I love this because thing. of the different tabs. Yeah. The tabs kind of ruined it. It's very... It's, it was honestly, like, confusing yeah. going through everything. Uh, so, Windows... Oh, yeah. Yeah, look, that's Look it. at this guy. Yeah. One of the issues with this is like you have Internet Explorer there and no one's using Internet Explorer. Right. So like they're trying to get or they're they're either trying to guess what you want or they're trying to force certain yeah. things on you. Uh being able to customize this would have been a little better. But I want something like this that uh has all of the things that I want to get into. It yeah. has to know yeah. the stuff I'm gonna load up all of the time. Mm -hmm. Try to guess what I want to do when I turn my device on. Your registration change is taking a while to complete. Please check back later. Okay, sure. We'll move on to other stories. I'll periodically check back to see uh, if I got the new preview and how um, <laughs> vastly different it changes my uh, Windows experience. Anybody notice the white balance is different? These fucking lights uh, just... So they're bicolor? Yeah. And they're like... you know That means they're like boys and girls. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Very progressive. Uh, they're they they have like warm and cool like LEDs in them. Yeah, and the warm ones just stopped working. So okay, there you go. That's what we're working. You guys co going to Anime NYC? No, no, we're not even going to Comic Con. Yeah, uh, we got rejected. Although I reapplied as media. Let's okay, see how that works. All right. Otherwise, I'm not going. Yeah, I've I've made peace with not going. Uh, yo, Will, met you at Long Island Retro Convention. Thank you for giving me a comic book and signing it. Uh, that's right. I saw someone recognize me, so I gave him a comic book and he asked me to sign it. Oh, so what comic? It was of uh, Green Lantern Emerald Warriors, I think it was. You gave one. him a comic book? Yeah, I was giving out. If anyone saw me, I was like, hey, I'll give you a comic oh, book. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to start doing. If you see me at a convention, I'll give you a comic if book. If you see him on the streets. If you see me on the streets. Just say, I give beat me a comic. Me up. But if you see me at a convention, ask me for a comic. I will give you a comic book. Uh, okay. Well, next. Oh, let's uh, do this. Backlog! 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 Hey, everybody. It's backlog time. It's early in the show, but yay, we know what? Shut up. Uh, this Shut is the part up. of the show where we go through our video game collection, every game we've ever bought. We put into an Excel spreadsheet, and today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we played it. And we were just at a game convention, so games have been added. We are now up to 972. Oh, hell yeah. 847. Pretty high on 847. the list. 847. Use a random number generator to pick one. 847. That would be... Mass Effect for the Xbox 360. Mass Effect. Oh, the first one. The first one. We didn't do this? No. Did we do any Mass Effect? We have not done a Mass Effect. Oh. Uh, I tried so hard. Same. So I really tried. We played this game late. Yes. Uh, I got it on clearance at Target. That shows you how late when we played it. I don't think the second game would come out yet, but I remember... Uh, it was well after it had originally come out. Yeah. This game had a lot of praise. Everybody was going nuts about it. Yeah, a lot this. of hype over it. I think, was the second one or the third one out? Maybe the third I one might have been out. I don't out. know. No, the third one definitely wasn't out. I don't know if the second game was out or not yet. I heard a lot of great things about this. Yeah. And one of the best things about Mass Effect is in the trilogy... Uh, your save file carries over throughout the three games. Yes. So it kind of incentivizes you to do the story from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I really liked the idea of that. Uh, and I liked the whole idea of like choosing your dialogue options and stuff. And now that seems like a normal thing in like RPGs. Yeah. But uh, this kind of uh, uh, 
it wasn't done it at the, popularized it yeah it was wasn't done on like this scale before yeah. this was like a major release this was bioware this is um you know there's their spiritual successor the nice of the old republic in a way um it was much right nice of the old republic had uh yeah. dialogue options yeah too. Um, this was much more action focused than Knights of the Old Republic was. This was like um, real time combat instead of turn based combat. Yeah. Um, it was Bioware's own IP, so they can do a lot more with the story and tell a much grander uh, militaristic story. Um, People loved this series of games because they felt an attachment to all of the yeah. characters and stuff, uh, because you really are like making your own story and there's mm -hmm. depending on your choices there's different characters that come with you throughout all of the different games yeah and tragic things happen to the characters and you you fall in love with some of the yeah. characters like a whole thing also the gameplay people really liked in two and three yeah. <laughs> uh so unfortunately i felt obligated to force my way through this game yeah and i did not make it very far me neither look at how bad the camera is we're right in the beginning of the game look at the running <laughs> it's shaking all over the place i well i think in this section like your ship's under attack or like you're no you're it no this is isn't this the citadel isn't this like the oh yeah that is a citadel never mind it's been <laughs> yeah, so literally hard. just the camera <laughs> shaking for no reason it's like the gears of war like running well, the thing is, like, the Gears of War running, that was, like, a specific action you had to perform. Mm -hmm. This dude's just doing the regular running <laughs> animation. It, the, the, the game mechanics were not great in this game. The, so, the game is ostensibly a third-person cover shooter mm -hmm. with a lot of, like, heavy RPG elements. Like, you, you build up your character, your team, uh, your stats. You can specialize in different... Uh, abilities and functions um the whole thing you could be paragon or renegade based on your gameplay actions and specifically your dialogue actions uh you can either be like the savior of humanity or the devil in a sense but the moment to moment gameplay is that of a third person cover shooter from the early xbox 360 days well the problem <laughs> is also uh, a third person cover shooter from the early xbox 360 days that ran on the unreal 3 engine was Gears of War. Yeah. And that game was a much better third-person cover shooter. So, like, given the choice between the two, like, I would much rather play Gears of War because it had a more fluid, more streamlined third-person shooting mechanic. How sure are you that there are cover mechanics in this game? Because this guy refuses to go take cover. I'm pretty sure either had to have been. I feel I, like that might have been in the second game. No. That was, might have been one of the problems with this game. No, there. I def. I vi I definitely remember like standing standing behind a chest high wall. I remember when Gears after Gears of War came out. I expected third person games yeah. to have cover mechanics, right. and a lot of them yeah. did not, and I was disappointed. Um, this guy's just running and this shooting. Is, this guy's running and gunning. So the thing that really killed it for me, like I didn't mind the shooting mechanics. I'm like, yeah. look at all, look at this freaking UI. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind. The, the the shooting mechanics or whatever my biggest problem was riding around in the car that was everybody's biggest problem with this, this ruined the game for me this was like a lot of people's like the, their low point in the game was riding around in the car mm -hmm. you know i because like you have to land on the planet then you get in the car and then you got to drive around the planet to try and find like you know the hub world or the mission or whatnot and later games just like bypass that completely I kind of get what they were going for because, like, it does make the universe and the planets you're visiting feel big and expansive. But the problem is, you know, the car controlled like crap. And when there's nothing in the world to, like, look at or explore other than, like, you know, dirt, you know, it's not very interesting. Yeah, no, look at this. Yeah. This is boring as hell. And they yeah. just pop out. You just <laughs> exist outside of the, of yeah. the ship. Yeah. Uh, this also got a lot of flack. One of the memes was the elevator loading screens. Yeah, they so they tried to mask loading screens by um, just I, having you sit in an elevator. Yeah, they were long, yeah. <laughs> long loading screens. Uh, I do know that the Mass Effect uh, Legendary Edition, which came out on modern systems, uh, it's all three games in the trilogy. 
uh, still has the elevator loading screens, but because it's on an SSD and much better technology, like the loading is instant. So like right. the elevator rides are much shorter than that. That was also on like super duper clearance at Target. And I almost picked it up for nostalgia sake because I'm like, I bought Mass Effect 1 at clearance at Target. Might as well get the whole trilogy on clearance at Target. I didn't because I don't, I don't hate the series. I like the idea of it. I just feel like I was turned off by the poor execution of the first game. What did it for me, the reason why I stopped playing was because I was enjoying like the dialogue trees and stuff, but I got to a point where I was in the middle of a conversation and the dialogue I selected did not reflect what happened on screen. Oh, that also pissed me off. Yeah. There was a lot of times where you'd see like a, like a sentence in the dialogue and you're like, yeah, I want to do that. And then the guy would like get mean. Yeah. Or, or, and you're like, wait, I didn't mean it like that. Well, my specific one, you know, I picked like the Paragon option, the good guy option. And the on-screen action was um, Commander Shepard shot the dude in the head. Yeah. Like, what the what, fuck? What was that? Like, <laughs> that happened a lot. Yeah. In the, in the, uh, well, not to that extent, but there was a lot of little things where I would pick a dialogue option and what ended up happening was not what I was expecting or intending at yeah. all. And I wish I could go back and fix it because I did not, ex it was, I did not get a good enough read on the situation right. based on the one sentence. Um, that the tone was completely off by what the sentence said. Yeah. And like in your case, you shot the fucking guy in the face. <laughs> um, but that leads to some funny things too. Like the, like, doesn't he punch a girl in the face? Yeah, he punches a reporter, a reporter in the face. face. Yeah, I don't know if that's in this game or a later game. I think it's in the second one. Um, also, what's going on here? He's like invisible, <laughs> like half there. Yeah, half you not. can get like different abilities and stuff. Oh, there's cover. He yeah. took cover. There you go. See, I wasn't. I he wasn't finally crazy. did it. Yeah, this is a game that I think would very much benefit from a remake. I would maybe play a remake of this. I think the Legendary Edition of. Uh, fixed a lot of issues and added a lot of uh gameplay mechanics from the later games back into the first one okay so like the cover shooting is better um i don't know if they streamlined the rpg elements or not but i I know like they they like try to make all the games feel like one complete experience get so, rid of the car yeah well Maybe. no the car's still there well that sucks yeah um so this is part of a trilogy. Everybody liked the second and third one like a lot. Everyone liked the second one. Okay. Everyone... Nobody liked the end of the third one. Correct. <laughs> People liked the third one, but they hated the ending. Yes. So much so that they patched the ending. Yeah. People still didn't like it. Uh, then uh, Andromeda came out way later. And I had the opportunity to go preview Andromeda. Yeah. I, they, I like flew to like uh, uh, San Diego or something to try it. Because I was uh, working for this YouTube channel that did... Uh, bioware and bethesda games yeah and i don't like bioware or bethesda games <laughs> so for some reason i was chosen to go check this game out mm -hmm. and i had only at that point i had only played the first game and i didn't like it yeah so i'm playing andromeda before the game's out and i'm like hey man this game's pretty good yeah because in my mind i'm like the first game was not great right this is a massive improvement over that <laughs> this is awesome and the game came out and everybody hated it yep uh i still think it was pretty good i still enjoyed what i what i played um so just to clear up uh for the legendary edition uh, according to wikipedia the mako which is the car um right. got a got a speed increase and updated physics so it'll at least handle better than it did in the original that's uh, that's not so, enough for me yeah i want to fast forward over <laughs> that stuff uh edward bova in the chat uh brought up a really interesting point so this game is controversial because you can you can have relationships with your crewmates you can even have sex with your crewmates oh no was that the issue that, or was it that uh you could have gay sex no it was just regular it was just regular regu old regular vanilla sex. heterosexual sex, sex. <laughs> boring vanilla sex and like yeah this is like on like Jeff Keighley had to go on Fox News to defend this game against people who didn't want to hear it. They're just like, there's sex in this game. Children play video games, and you poor Jeff Keighley's like, there's a there's an age rating on it. Like there's an M rated game. You shouldn't let your children play M rated. Yeah, it's games. literally a movie. It's what literally I, like best a movie. I remember of that was he asked the one of the women who was on there who like wrote some dumb book about like oh children protect the children whatnot. He asked her 
have you played the game? And she said, no, of course I haven't played the game. So people who play Mass Effect go to the Amazon page of her book and just like review bomb it. And all they said was, I didn't read the book, but, <laughs> but it offends me greatly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Thank you, Mass Effect, for making sex in games okay, because sex is it's awesome. Okay. Sex is cool, man. I'm glad responsibly, we're, responsibly, responsibly. I'm glad we're past the point. People seem to have a general understanding that video games uh, are just another form of media. Yeah. Uh, I think part of that is that kids these days just playing Fortnite. Yeah. They're not playing stuff like this. <laughs> um, so anyway, if this is a hard one to recommend because uh, the first game's rough. Yeah. And I don't think the fixes in the Legendary Edition are going to do too much for you. I mean, maybe, because, like, again, they also updated combat to make it feel more like this, the next games with aim assist, um, a dedicated melee button. Um, boss encounters have been adjusted. Uh, there's more frequent uh, auto saving. So, like, if you do want to try Mass Effect, the original Mass Effect, the Legendary Edition would be the way, the go the way to go. And you get the other two. So yeah. there, there's like two months worth of video gaming right there for you. I'd imagine they're all on Game Pass, right? I don't know. So the first Mass Effect game was actually published by Microsoft. Yeah, it was, a, it was an exclusive. Yeah, but then EA bought BioWare. And BioWare, I guess, owned the rights to Mass Effect still. So then they slowly trickled it out to other systems. The uh, Legendary Edition is on Game Pass. Okay. Uh, it says play with controllers. Oh, because um, it's probably part of a uh, EA play. Oh, okay. yeah, Electronic Arts. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So try it with Game Pass. Uh, at least you can get it for pretty cheap. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's it's not uh, easy to recommend because you got the first game is rough. So if you want to skip the first game, uh. We say that the uh, your save file carries over between them. Yeah. But if you jump in on the second or third game, there's a little cutscene that has you make op like dialogue options uh, that basically creates the story from. It's like a it's like a quick little streamlined yeah uh, version of the first game. I mean, basically. also too like the whole big thing is the, you know the character Commander Shepard. You create Commander Shepard. Uh, they can be male or female. You can adjust their looks <gasps> to be exactly what you want them to be. Um, and like your Commander Shepard carries over from game to game, but each game conveniently comes up with a way to like obscure their face in the beginning, so that if you are just jumping into the second or third one without playing the first one and don't have a character to import, you can just create a character right there. Yeah, so uh, if you do want to just jump into the second or third one, you can. But yeah. uh, if you're cool with just uh, forcing through something for the story, uh, go for it. Again, it's on Game Pass. You can get it for pretty cheap. Uh, thanks for watching. The backlog. We'll see you later. Thanks for uh, coming to a podcast. Thanks for the people who are here watching the podcast. You can see them making a little chat message. Right here. Bye. Bye. Uh, all right. We got a couple of notifications here. We got Zeth, the Dark Mage, three months. Hey, Bob. Hey, Will. Just got my RG35XXSP today. Happy Tuesday. Nice. You got one of those? The SP, right? Yeah. I'm actually enjoying it. Shocker of all wow. shockers. Wow. I even I even recommended it to two of my wife's friends who were like, you don't want to play like older games. It is the best recommendation because it just works. Yeah. So like I showed it to him. I was like, you could just put anything on here. Um, if you get it and you don't know how to put anything on here, just give it to me and give me like 20 minutes. I'll do it. Just make sure they don't open the first tab. Yeah. The second tab. They got to do it from the second. Tab. Mm -hmm. Well, I sent them your video afterwards. Oh, so, good. Yeah. Uh, one me games thanks for the two bucks off topic got an rg ally x for 630 dollars at best buy open that is pretty a good a lot of money off that's 170 dollars off that's yeah. crazy hey if you want to get an ally x uh use the link that's in my video on the ally x because uh that was sponsored by best buy and the video didn't do good <laughs> <laughs> and i would like them to sponsor me again so please use that link if you want to buy anything from Best Buy, actually, just use that link to buy anything. I'm yeah. sure it'll work. Uh, Will, do you mark on your list which games you did as backlog episodes? Yeah, yes. like they get highlighted in yellow.
of which ones we've done and which ones we have. I sworn we did on NASA. Nope, it was not yellow. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, all right. They actually did say that this game could have been AO rated. Asked why it wasn't. Because you don't see cock. You don't like, see anything. Like, it, it's fully clothed. They, they, It's like a movie. Not even, because, like, some... It's a mature-rated game, which is the equivalent to an R-rated game, but in R-rated movies, you you can see boobs and butts yeah. and stuff. Yeah. This game, it's not even that. It's like what you would see on, like, you know, network TV after 10 o'clock. Everybody's fully clothed. They're, like, rolling around and stuff, and, like, the the picture keeps fading to black and it's over in like five seconds, you know? And meanwhile, the media made it seem like it's like just, just hardcore fucking. There's way better game sex scenes now. Yeah. Heavy rain had like a much more like, in, like intimate and like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Involved. You, Involved. Had, to, you had to use the, you, you had did, to you play you it. To actually, you had to literally play you it. You had to actually like hit the right buttons to unhook her bra and stuff. <laughs> Sick, dude. <laughs> Heavy Rain we covered on the backlog. I like that game. Yeah, you. Yeah. I remember you played that a lot. Yeah, you. Uh, you were always. It was a very good game, and our mom was into it because she liked watching, especially me. that one yes. scene. <laughs> I'm giving up on uh, trying to get the the Xbox thing on here. Your registration is comp- uh, it's taking a while. Please check back later. Can I close it? Nope. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, we got more news to go through. How oh, about yeah. Sega delisting Sonic Generations? What the? Oh, yeah. They, they did something naughty. Here well, here's what, here's what happened. Sega is delisting 2011 Sonic Generations from Steam and the Xbox Game Store to make way for the game's upcoming expanded remaster, Sonic X Shadow Generations. But the publisher is taking a rarely seen approach in its plan to remove the original game from sale. It will both delist the title from sale and make it available for people who really want to purchase it. While the original Sonic Generations will be removed from sale as a standalone title on September 9th, Sega said on Friday that we've heard your feedback and we want to help preserve the game. Therefore, Sonic Generations will be available via bundles of other Sonic titles on Steam and Xbox. The publisher said on a post on Twitter, um, existing owners of the title will still be able to download and play the game as well. Lastly, we are happy to confirm that mods for the Steam version will not be affected. So, it, are they trying to do an Overwatch 2 situation where the game is now Sonic X? Shadow? No. So, okay. basically what this means is, so, they, you know, they sell bundles of Sonic games on Steam. Mm-hmm. You have to buy one of those bundles in order to get Sonic Generations. I, I understand. Yeah. And I don't like that. But right. well, uh, I'm trying to understand why they're getting rid of the game completely so because they don't want people to confuse it with the new one that's correct it's similar to what they did um they delisted sonic one two and three and and knuckles from like stores when the origins collection was coming out right 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 so yeah, they, they want you to get that right version, i understand right but i guess you know because it looks like sonic generations and sonic x shadow are are significantly different so why not yeah. keep the original version around in addition to this new version that's I think out. that's confusing me a lot because I still don't understand how different Sonic X Shadow Generations is from the original Sonic Generations. Yeah, it honestly just looks like the same game with some Shadow DLC thrown yeah, in. Yeah, I want to know how different it yeah. is. And I don't know if I'm going to know that until the game comes yeah. out. Like, no previews are going to convince me that it's that different yeah. because they could just be previewing the, the Shadow levels. Yeah. This comes out next. Well, I mean, you could keep reading if you want. Uh, no, that's all right. We we got the gist of it. Uh, Sonic X Shadows is coming uh, October twenty fifth. That's a while. Yeah, that's a while from. I mean, but the, like at least the game, like they're still gonna have the game available if you haven't played it already or haven't gotten it yet. You just have to get a couple of other Sonic games along with it. Yeah, that's not cool. What are the what are the bundles? Um, Sonic the Hedgehog Ultimate Bundle. So that is a $200. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. What the hell? This is for the brand new Sonic. Thing. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's got everything. It literally has everything. Well, hold on. What? 
It doesn't have that much now that I look at it. Sonic Mania. Uh, wait, that's just the Encore DLC. Sonic Mania. Team Sonic Racing, Sonic Forces, Sonic Generations Collection. So that just, oh, that's with the DLC. Yeah. Lost World, which I never played. Uh, I only played a little bit. I think I only played the Green Hill Zone because you unlocked it. In Lost World? Yeah. No, I never beat that game. Didn't you have to unlock the, the Green Hill Zone? Because I think I only played the Green Hill Zone. I don't remember. Uh, no, that... that um, are you thinking of the, the Yoshi and the Zelda DLC that came with that? I'm thinking of Sonic Generations. Don't you unlock the Green Hill Zone in that? That's the first level in Sonic Generations. There's an open world Green Hill Zone. Am I thinking of Sonic Adventure? In one level, one game, you unlock an open world Green Hill Zone. Sonic Adventure 2, you unlock Green Hill Zone. You have to get S rank on every single level. I'm thinking of that. Okay, because uh, I sure as shit did not get S rank on every I single did. level. I did. I did. It was a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, Sonic All-Star Racing, uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I only have regular Sonic Adventure 2 in my Steam library. Sonic the Hedgehog 4. Oh, yeah, baby. Both versions. Sonic Spinball. Sonic uh, Dr. Robotnik's Me Beam Machine. Sonic 3D Blast. Sonic All-Star Racing. So does this not have 1, 2, and 3? It does not have 1, 2, and 3. It does not have 1, 2, and 3. It doesn't even have the Origins collection. You're not Ultimate, dude. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to have like some like Sonic 3D collection bundle where it's like cheaper and it's just like that and Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 and... This what, doesn't no? even have Sonic Adventure 1. This bundle sucks, and it's $200. <laughs> Maybe they'll come out with a new bundle that, like, is cheaper. I don't know, man. I'm not Sega. Uh, they don't link any of the other bundles here. Uh, I'm assuming yeah. there's other ones. Because it's it's they not can't just... They can't just have it. According to the article, it's not clear which bundle or bundles the original Sonic Generations will be sold through in the future, but the game is available as part of the Ultimate bundle. So the collection bundle is still available. Yeah, that's just the game with the DLC. It's only twenty bucks, mm -hmm. um, and that's it. That's all I see. That and the Ultimate Collection. So, <laughs> fucking <laughs> goddamn, dude. Hopefully, there's more. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a bundle with like the new game. Yeah. Did this get a good deal in the summer sale? I mean, that was ten. It's two hundred dollars yeah. after the ten percent off. Still need O six. I would buy O six if it came to Steam. I would buy that in a heartbeat because I want to play. I actually want to play it, and I don't want to break out of three sixty. Yeah, and that's the only way to play it right mm -hmm. now. Because I could just give you the disc from 360. Maybe version. that is a good candidate for a 360 emulation. I have never emulated a 360 game. Because it yeah. just seems like a pain in the ass, but I think it's gotten a lot better now. Yeah, you can do I know you can do it on a Steam Deck. I don't know how like stable it is. Mm -hmm. That game's gonna be rough because you don't know if it's glitching out because it's the game or because it's the emulation. Yeah. All right. Uh so that sucks. We don't like that. But we'll see how that plays out. In some good news, question mark, uh, Crafton, everybody's favorite Crafton. Yeah. Everyone loves Crafton. Who the fuck's Crafton? <laughs> acquires Tango Gameworks and Hi-Fi Rush IP from Xbox. PUBG publisher Crafton has acquired Tango Gameworks and Hi-Fi Rush IP from Xbox as part of a strategic agreement. The firm says it is working with Xbox to enable a smooth transition so that Tango team can continue developing the Hi-Fi Rush IP and explore future projects. Tango Gameworks was one of four Bethesda studios that Microsoft announced plans to shut down back in May. Uh, it was formed by Resident Evil creator Shinji Mikami in 2010 and was responsible for The Evil Within, Evil Within 2, and Ghostwire Tokyo before launching Hi-Fi Rush in 2023 to critical acclaim. Xbox acquired the studio in 2021 as part of a $7.5 billion purchase of ZeniMax and it, uh, Bethesda. Despite the critical success, Microsoft announced it will be closing Tango Gameworks as part of an effort to focus on high-impact titles. It also announced closures of Redfall developer Arcane Austin, Mighty Doom Studio, Alpha Dog, and Roadhouse Games. Crafton said the acquisition will have no impact on the availability... That's all, folks on the availability of Tango's previous releases and that they will remain available uh, where they are currently. The firm said that 
The firm said in a statement, this integration enforces Crafton's dedication to expanding its global footprint and enhancing its portfolio with innovative and high quality content. The addition of Tango Gameworks represents a strategic alignment with Crafton, with Crafton's mission to publish the to push the boundaries of interactive entertainment. What does it mean uh, that the games will be available where they currently are? Does that so sometimes when a game when a game studio gets acquired by another studio, mm -hmm. the games get taken down and then get put back up again so that they can be bought um and the money goes to the new publisher it's, so it's my understanding that they're only purchasing high fi rush they're purchasing all of tango gameworks well they're purchasing all of tango gameworks but they're the only ip they're acquiring is high fi rush my understanding was that uh microsoft is keeping i think all of the other ips okay interesting this was uh positioned as like when th when this news broke, Twitter yeah. was going nuts and acting like this was great. And I don't know if it is. I mean, it's good that, you know, a studio was essentially saved. It's good that like people didn't lose their jobs or like, you know, had the possibility of keeping their jobs. I don't know if that happened. Like the studio closed, didn't it? Right. I, I assume what, so. That's where I'm confused. Right. I thought the studio closed and they all lost their jobs. Uh, I'd imagine that barely any of the people who worked there are going to be here. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't think Shinji Mikami's coming back. Yeah, no. Well, he left. I he think, left a while ago. Yeah, before this even happened. Yeah, he left when uh, Hi-Fi Rush was released. Which I think is part of the reason why they shut this down. They essentially said that's the reason why they yeah. shut it down. So. So, I don't know what the hell they're going to do with Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah. You know? Well, I don't know if they're going to have the people who worked on it work on a second one. Like, that's part of why I think a second one would have been great, is if yeah. the same talent works on it. Now, mm -hmm. now who knows what's going to happen. Uh, this is the PUBG guys. Publisher, yeah. yeah or publisher, yeah. yeah the, publisher, the people yeah. who made PUBG. Mm -hmm. I don't want them working on anything. Yeah. That fucking game <laughs> is broken all hell. Um, that, that game's held together by duct tape. Uh, I don't know what else Crafton has done. I looked into it uh, when I heard this news break, um, and it seems like it's basically just PUBG. The Callisto Protocol. The bad um, Dead Space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so... They're like, their their discography doesn't look that great, right? So who knows? They got a bunch of mobile stuff too. Maybe they're gonna make a High Five Rush mobile game. Honestly, there you go. it wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I hate that too much. So I don't. I I need to know a lot more about this as it unfolds well, because I think, I'm not, you know, as happy as everybody else is about this. I think this is the first step towards like the continuation of tango uh mm -hmm. as a studio and also hi-fi rush as a series because they, they were pre i think they were prepping a hi-fi rush too right before microsoft's like actually we'd rather just shut you down yeah so. i'd like to know how much of that is going to carry over how, how much of yeah. those people are going to continue to work on this all right uh also boss team make well, boss team games yes making a halloween game with, with john, john carpenter. carpenter he's notably video gamer yeah notable video gamer john uh carpenter. to quote him i like sonic the hedgehog even the one where he turns into a werewolf <laughs> oh so there you go <laughs> real one right there two new games based on the 1978 horror classic halloween are in development at boss team games uh, while details are limited, both games are apparently being developed in conjunction with the producers of the Halloween franchise. What's more, one of the games is being developed in Unreal Engine 5 and will include input from original director John Carpenter. As a huge gamer myself, I'm thrilled uh, to help bring Michael Myers to life again in this game, and my hope is to scare you silly, said Carpenter, who will be intimately involved with the development of the new projects. According to the official press release, the game will allow players to relive moments from the film and play as classic characters from one of the most iconic and important horror films of all time the two new games are being developed in association with 
uh, Compass International Pictures and Further Front with the Unreal Engine 5 project still early in development. Uh, while Halloween is now more than 45 years old, there have been a uh, few video games based on the legendary slasher franchise. Uh, the closest the series came uh, to see an actual adaptation was 1983's Halloween on the Atari 2600, where you play as a babysitter, presumably Laurie Schrode, trying to find a safe room uh, while being hunted by Michael Myers. The Michael Myers was also one of the main villains to appear in Dead by Daylight. Um, so yeah, we're... We're getting Halloween games. One of them is an Unreal Engine 5 game being uh, worked on with John Carpenter, which is great. He needs to do more things in video games because I think he's happier doing video games than he is doing movies, you know? What else has he done? He he was involved with... Um, there was a John Carpenter's The Thing video game where he had, like, input in. And there was another... There's a game coming out. I forgot the name of it. It's like John Carpenter's Howling Commandos or some shit. Okay. <laughs> I'll look it up. But like, I don't know. That seems mostly like, hey, can we put your name on this? And I'm sure he's like, yeah, I like money. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, uh, you know, I'll, I'll reserve my judgment for when the game comes out. Well, maybe you will reserve your judgment uh, because today, that was yesterday's news. Today, Boss Team revealed one of those two Halloween games already. It is a 16-bit platformer based on Halloween and also a 16-bit platformer based on Evil Dead. What the hell? <laughs> In a press release, Boss Team Games an, uh, announced Retro Realms, a new series of what games for consoles and like, PC. The this first, looks like Zero, Katana Zero. Yeah. The first two games in this new series are based on John Carpenter's iconic franchise, Halloween, and the Star's original series, Ash vs. the Evil Dead. You can watch the new trailer below. Uh, everyone at Boss Team Games are huge fans of horror, and getting to work with these legendary properties is a dream come true, Boss Team Games CEO Steve Harris explained in a press release. Uh, it has been an amazing experience collaborating with WayForward and our licensors to create not one, but two fast-paced, 90s-style, arcade-style uh, games while remaining true to the original Halloween film and the Ash vs. Evil Dead series. The trailer driving today gives fans a taste of the gore-filled gameplay and fast-paced action, and we can't wait to show you more. Both Retro Realms Halloween and Retro Realms Ash vs. the Evil Dead, as depicted in the announcement trailer, are 16-bit platformers. Both games are coming to PC, PS5, Switch, and Xbox on October 18th, and both games can be purchased separately via digital download for $25 each, or you can purchase the physical double feature bundle, which will retail for $50. Although both games can be purchased and played separately, Boss Team Games incentivizes people to purchase both. As the studio notes in the press release, purchasing both will grant players access to new features. The announcement of these two games is uh, just one of the many projects that Boss Team currently is working on. As said before, they also have a Unreal Engine 5 Halloween game being worked on with John Carpenter. So is this one game or two games? It's two games. Mm -hmm. But they want you to buy both of them because obviously they do. If you do buy both of them, um, it's like Pokemon. Like there's stuff that goes back and forth between games. Oh, so the levels are the same. The character is different. No, the uh, the levels are designed for each. Like okay, the levels like this is uh, right now we're looking at the Evil Dead one. So this is specifically Evil Dead influence levels. But if you buy the two games, then Ash from Evil Dead can go to Haddonfield, Illinois, where Halloween takes place, and Michael Myers can go to the cabin from Evil Dead. Okay, so, so that's cool. So yeah. so the mechanics are... It's the same engine. It's the yeah. same, like, uh, uh, mechanics, but the levels are different, and the, the, the characters play differently. Um, this looks awesome. Yeah. It, I don't know how I feel about playing as Michael Myers. Yeah, that's the that's weird, weird one, you know? In an action game. Yeah, because <laughs> he's not the hero. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you're giving him, like, a little bit of mortality. Yeah. Because obviously the, the, the objective is to not get killed by all of these things yeah. around you. Yeah, and the thing with, like, Halloween, like, the, like, the reason why I like Halloween more than I like, like, Friday the 13th or, like, some of those other slashes is because, like, it felt much more grounded than the rest of them. Like, it never got too big. It never got too... I mean, later sequels did, obviously, but, like, the good Halloween movies, like, the original, like, just felt very, like, down to earth and, like, the, the fear was just, like, the, not knowing why he keeps coming, you know? Yeah. Whereas this game, he's, like 
just fucking going nuts and whatnot. Yeah, it's so, like a, he's like it's just like an action yeah. movie. So that, that's weird. like tonally weird, but you know, I mean, it makes sense for Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this looks cool. Yeah. Uh, October eighteenth. Okay. Yeah. Is that the day Sonic Generations comes out? Is that the week before? I think it's the week. Before. Uh, what did I? I literally just read the article. Is the week before? I think that right. I think Sonic Generations was twenty fifth. Yeah. And way forward's doing it, so that's cool. Yeah, they make good stuff. They make good stuff. Um, where are we? Let's move on to Arcane co-founder making Dishonored spiritual. Yes. Uh, more news about you know Microsoft Studios that got closed down, but are having second life somewhere else after leaving Arcane Studios. Dishonored co-creator uh, Raf Colantino. Uh, founded Wolfi Studios, and the company released the isometric immersive sim Weird West. But Wolfi is now doing something that fans may uh, like even more. Production has officially begun on a first-person action RPG with a retro sci-fi aesthetic, and Dishonored and Prey fans can help shape development. The stolen title game, which just finished its pre-production phase, looks to draw heavily on the old but new technology seen in games like Dishonored, with huge automations of... Uh, with sorry, with huge automatons uh, visible in concept art at Wolf Eyes, uh shared alongside the announcement. Wolf Eyes says it's brand new IP. This is a brand new IP that will be built upon the DNA of earlier arcane games to deliver a rich and detailed world, uh, freedom of how you, to play in a deep RPG experience. With Dishonored Studio Arcane Austin shuttered by Microsoft, that may make Wolf Eyes game uh, its spiritual successor and Colin Antonio. Uh, is confident in the team's vision, but he also values your input. A sign-up form for the cha- for the chance to get into a limited alpha test is available on the studio's website. So, if you were worried that we might not get any more Dishonor games because Microsoft decided to shut down Arcane, the guy who made them was like, "No, I'm doing it." <laughs> I like Dishonored. Yeah. Um, I started playing the second one. I didn't like get very far in it. I should really like pick that up again and like try to finish it. Because the first one was very good. It's very good. It's a cool uh, stealth-ish yeah. uh, first-person slasher. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, now, uh, what was that other game they they made with the uh, Always Online? Redfall. No, no, no. Before that. Right before that. Dead something. They gonna, are they going to pray? Nope. You sure it's arcane? Oh, God, I'm going to look real silly. Because <laughs> arcane is known for Dishonored, Prey, and Redfall. Those that, are the games. That one. Oh, Deathloop. Deathloop. Yeah. Uh, it gave me uh, Dishonored vibes, but uh, yeah. I wasn't too... That was another game. People like, loved that game. Yeah, and I was like, like, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Maybe I should like actually like sit down and play it. Cause I was playing that on like the steam deck. There was a lot of like fucking like things that the game was trying to get you. Like before you would start a, a, a level, first of all, it's a loop. So you play yeah. the same levels over and over again. Uh, before you'd start it, they'd like tell you all these things that you need to do. And it wasn't very clear. There was no clear, like, yeah. To just like ending the game. Uh, the most fun I had in that game was, uh, somebody was stream sniping me and yeah. like, try, like entering my game and killing me. Yeah. Uh, and that got very annoying, but yeah. that was a unique experience that I can only have in death. So that's why I would turn that off because I don't want to play with anyone else. But that was, that was the most fun I had playing the whole game. And then right. I stopped playing because, mm-hmm. uh, I felt like I had no, uh, like, I don't know. Uh, I, I had nothing to tell me, uh, there's no motivation to get me to do something right. in, in the game. So I stopped playing. Uh, on the other side, Arcane Leon, which is still uh, still active, uh, they are working on Marvel's Blade. Next. I am excited about that. I hope that, that is good. sounds really cool. Yes. Doing uh, Blade. I mean, you got Dishonored. Yeah. Could very easily just yeah. be a, a skin swap with Blade. All right, so I've been sitting here messing around with my uh, Game Pass thing. There's a lot of different tabs and stuff to go right. back between the Insider Hub, the uh, 
Xbox app, uh, the preview thing. It made me take a survey for a second. Now it's making me record my freaking uh, screen, and I'm not going to do that. Right. So uh, this is not exactly right. Prime time. So it did make me get rid of the... Uh, it did make me close collapse the sidebar, which is the big deal that we were talking about before. Yeah. But it's still not exactly like ready for controller navigation. It's not. not mm. So the other, so going back to John Carpenter for a minute, the game he's work was working on was John Carpenter's toxic commando. That published. No, I'm thinking of toxic event. You're thinking of toxic event. Yeah. Published. Uh no, Toxic Commando, uh Saber Interactive and Focus Entertainment. Not out yet. Okay. I'm pretty sure they literally just went to him and said, Hey, do you want to be involved in this game? And he said, Give me money. And they gave him money. Can we please put your and name then, on this? And then he's yeah, then he sat at home to play games he actually likes. So a lot of people were telling me about this one. Um Doom. Yes. He's getting a new and improved definitive release on Yes. Uh, uh, this was mentioned at our panel. Yeah, too, so QuakeCon was last week. Cool deal. Uh, they announced that they were, re they were remastering Doom 1 and 2 for PC, for like all systems. And if you own Doom 1 or Doom 2 already, like they'll just give you the remastered versions for free, mm -hmm. which is cool. Um, you can still play the original versions. But that's not what we're talking about here. We were talking about... Uh, physical distributor Limited Run Games uh, has surprised Doom fans with a new definitive experience for the Super Nintendo. It's releasing a new and improved version of the SNES cartridge, including all four Doom episodes, including Thy Flesh Consumed, uh, including circle strafing, performance improvements, rumble support via an all-new controller, and more. What is circle strafing? Literally, like, when you hold, like, left or right on the controller and just like circle around. Does that just mean the D pad goes forward, back, left, strafe and right? Strafe? No, you circle strafed in a video game, in a first person shooting before. Okay. The in doom on, on, on super Nintendo. If I remember correctly, the D pad didn't work. Like didn't work like Wazda. Mm hmm. It worked like, you know, move forward, move back, turn left, turn right. Yeah, that's yeah. how a lot of games were at the time. Yeah. So, is circle strafing turn left, turn right? No, circle strafing is literally like you hold left strafe and like forward to like circle around. To turn. To circle. Oh, that's just strafing. That's just regular. No, strafing is... Yeah, stri yeah, it's but I'm horizontally. R regular games these days, the yes. left stick goes forward, back, strafe, left, strafe, right. Yeah. So circle strafing is just hitting a diagonal. Yeah. Then. Okay. But like, that sounds normal. Yeah. Uh, where was I? There was even. Griff Griffinix says, think Z targeting and Ocarina of Time. Well, that would yeah. imply that you're locking on to enemies. Yeah, but like, you know, most first person shooters, you do that without the lock on. You know, it feels like yeah, that. you hit the diagonal. Yeah. Uh, there is even a custom chip inside which replicates the performance of the Super FX chip. Uh, and according to the creator of it, we have our own custom chip that is compatible with Super FX, but provides a larger address space and fewer weight states, so it runs faster. I'm very interested in that. Uh, and yes, Edward Bova, they are calling it the Super FX Three chip that sounds like a copyright issue <laughs> that is crazy and that uh has a lot more applications outside of this yeah uh, uh as that we're both posting in the chat they're already uh, talking about wanting to do star fox with this chip and also like include all the new features like rumble and stuff I can't imagine. Uh, Nintendo will never go yeah, for us. Nintendo <laughs> wanting uh, any part of this. Yeah. So this is limited run. This is limited and, run. Yeah. Uh, they. Uh, it could be hit or miss. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited to see how it goes, and I hope it goes well because they're creating a piece of hardware. It, it's they're creating a piece of hardware. Um. So the Doom on the Super Nintendo 
is not the best version of play doom like there's a million different better versions of play doom it's wacky and weird it, it's wacky yeah. and weird it didn't have all the the episodes in it um they're adding all like the fourth episode in here thy flesh consumed which wasn't in the original release um they're they're creating a whole controller for the super nintendo that features rumble which will only work with this game uh yeah it's crazy i kind of want it uh well do you want that or, or do you want the collector's edition no. which uh no. includes a delightfully uh, which uh there's only going to be 666 made Ooh, i get it because yeah because of the devil yeah so this game existed on the super nintendo yeah do so for the this super is nintendo. just uh so why do they need a super effects 3 chip to add in to add in all the extra features that they want to add, like the uh the fourth episode. Oh uh, okay. um the rumble, the circle strafing. Also, like like I said, Doom on Super Nintendo was not the best version of uh of Doom. Like it was just the most convenient for a lot of people. It it didn't look as good. Uh it had performance issues compared to the PC version. I believe Nintendo like censored it because that's what was their style at the time. Mm -hmm. So this is not currently available for pre-order. Not yet. No. Uh, it will arrive in early in uh, 2025. Uh, more details will be revealed in the future. Also, nothing about the controller because don't you need? Yeah, they haven't revealed the controller yet. Need the controller. I, I yeah. would imagine that I would also be getting a controller if I'm. I just want the game and the controller. I yeah. guess. Um, because if I'm gonna have Rumble, might as well. Yeah. All right, well, uh, I didn't know I'd be buying a Super Nintendo. <laughs> well, here you go. Uh, next news, Bungie. Not feeling great about Marathon. That's not good. No. The mood of Bungie regarding its upcoming game, Marathon, is not great. Uh, appearing on the latest episode of Skill Ups, Friends for a Second Podcast, Bloomberg journalist uh, Jason Schreier was asked what the temperature check was at Bungie relating to Marathon. Not great from what I've heard, Schreier replied. Um, there's a reason that it's uh, it was planned for this year and slipped a whole year, and people that I've talked to are a little pessimistic about even hitting its current plan deadline, but we'll see. I don't know exactly when that is. Sometime in 2025, I'm not sure. Uh, he added, yeah, the sentiment I've heard is not great around it, at least of a few months ago. Trier also pointed out that the game received a leadership shakeup earlier this year when game director Christopher Barnett and executive producer Carrie um, Guskos left the project. Guskos? <laughs> Given his opinion on the highly on the likely reception to the game uh, when it's released, Schreier said he didn't feel that Bungie's fan base uh, would be enthusiastic about a PvP extraction shooter and that he was concerned its continued development may lead to a similar situation to that of Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Oh, foreshadowing for later. Suicide Squad started development in 2017 when live service was the hot new thing and because of sunk cost fallacy and endless delays and because there wasn't really an interest or willingness in canceling it because they had committed so much money to it, uh, there was just a belief that uh, we want to get this out. It's going to be cool. It came out and it just totally flopped, he explained. It I worry about Marathon being in a similar situation where it's been in development for a while. It's entered development when extraction shooters were super hot. Uh, I don't know if that's the case anymore. Is Destiny not a live service game? I assumed it was. What makes a live service game? It's just constantly updated, always online, right? The live service, the service that right. Well, I don't think he's arguing that Destiny isn't a live service game. He's arguing that Marathon will suffer a fate that other live service games have suffered. Right, live service games like Suicide Squad, not Destiny, yeah. but like a game like Suicide Squad started development when live service games were like at their most popular mm -hmm. but it came out so late in the game that like people are over live service well well when extraction shooters were popular it entered right the space well, when all the publishers were trying to force live service games on people right. i wouldn't well, say he's they were comparing ever what happened to suicide squad with what he fears is going to happen to marathon i know and i i'm saying that's weird because Destiny has had a lot of success in their own live service. Well, game. Destiny has. Yeah. 
but other live service games haven't. Well, it's that's he, the point. He could be saying because Destiny is now not doing. He's he could be saying it, that there's no live service games aren't. Did doing you good. listen to what I, I read? I listened to what you said, there's, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm confused why the fuck he said that because the whole company is live service games. But he didn't say anything about. He didn't say anything. I know about, he didn't say anything about Destiny. That's why I'm confused because Destiny is a live service game that did really good. Yeah, so Destiny's Marathon, not the problem here. I know. Destiny's not. I know. <laughs> They can make a good live service game because they did that already. They're comparing it to a bad live service no, game. No, he doesn't. He's comparing the live service situation to extraction shooters. Yes, no, that's he's, what he's comparing it to. He's he's not comparing live service to extraction shooters. He's saying extraction shooters are a different thing. He's he compared he directly compared Marathon to Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad, which is a live service game, not an extraction shooter. Right. Yes, but, which is the thing that confused me because Destiny is great and is a live service game. What he said was mm -hmm. extraction shooters were popular a few years ago, but yes. by the time Marathon comes out, extraction shooters may not be popular which anymore. Which is not the thing that confused me at all, and I don't care about he's that part. He's <laughs> comparing it to Suicide Squad yes. because Suicide Squad started development when live services were at their peak. When publishers were pushing live service games. Because they were popular. No, no this says it entered development when extraction shooters were super hot. They, that's where marathon. does it say, yes, where does it say Suicide Squad started development in 2017 when live service was the new hot thing and because of sunk cost fallacy and endless delays and because there wasn't really an interest or willingness to cancel it because they had committed so much money to it and there was just the belief that we want to get it out. This is going to be cool. It was the new hot thing for publishers. It was never a popular thing. Is what I'm saying. But it was... <sighs> It was popular enough because there were different live service games that were hitting. Fortnite, Destiny, PUBG. Those are all live mm -hmm. service games that were popular. And everyone sure. was trying to get on that bandwagon. Sure. The reason why I'm confused by this is because Destiny is great and they did a good job with Destiny. So why wouldn't they do a good job with Marathon? Because... Marathon is a diff is going shaping up to be a different type of game. Apparently, it's going. It's not going to be. It's going to be different from Destiny. It's going to follow in the way that it is an extraction shooter. Yes, and that but they're not super hot right. They're now. They're concerned that by the time Marathon comes out, people will be as over extraction shooters as they are live service games now. It doesn't matter. That Bungie made a good life service game. If they could it make a, should. They could it make, should matter very they much. They could make a good extraction shooter. But if people don't give a shit about extraction shooters in 2025 or 2026, then nobody's going to buy this game and there's not going to be a Bungie anymore. Destiny 2 has been doing bad. Yes. And there are, we have read articles about that. And they could be thinking that uh, live service games aren't cool anymore because people don't like Destiny 2 anymore. But the real reason people don't like Destiny 2 anymore is because they're ruining Destiny 2. It's got nothing to do with the fact that people don't like live service games anymore. Destiny 1 was great. Destiny 2 was fine. And then they started doing shit that, that made people not like it anymore. Marathon could be great. It, I don't think it has anything to do with the landscape of games right now. I think that they're going to blame the landscape of games for making a bad game. That's what I think. And that's why I'm confused by this. Because they could just do what made Destiny 1 good in this and be fine. I am tired. <laughs> I am... I... I don't... I don't think what the Destiny situation... I mean, their morale is already low because Destiny has been doing poorly. Mm-hmm. And they just laid off a bunch of people twice. Yes. And they had got to get integrated into Sony. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's number one. Number two, part of Sony's initiative under the previous administration was they wanted to do more multiplayer games. And one of the hot multiplayer games right now is extraction shooters. So they decided to take Marathon 
one of their oldest IPs, a single player game, and turn it into an extraction shooter. The fear is that by the time the game comes out, no matter how much time or money or effort they put into it, people aren't going to like it because, you know, for whatever problems they may have with it and that extraction shooters are not the thing anymore. So there is real concern within Bungie that this is going to be their death, their death nail. And they're wrong (laughs) because they just need to make it a good game. People don't like bad extraction shooters. There's certain things where like games have uh, uh, moved past certain types of games. Like Halo Infinite, I think they needed to make things different. They can't just make a a team-based shooter like Halo and have it be successful. Right. That needs to change a little bit. But Marathon could be great as an extraction shooter if it was just a good extraction shooter. But are people going to play it i think bungie has just been sucking a lot lately and they've been uh uh blaming everybody else instead of looking inward and being like these games aren't good okay ruining these games all right so do you want all right so think about that if bungie sucks now and they're trying to put out an extraction shooter that could possibly save the studio yeah but they put out a current bungie game which sucks you mean yeah yeah yeah, that, that would ruin the studio yeah. and be bad. Yeah. So you can see that there's concern then within the studio. No, like, I could I could see where the concern is, but yeah. hey, we're not Halo Three Bungie anymore. Yeah, we're not even but but that but only that, Bungie. That's fucked up because they're being like uh they're they're blaming everyone else. They're blaming the landscape of games instead of blaming themselves for making bad games right now. I mean, I think part Let, of the- let's make a half-assed extraction shooter. People will love it if ga- if gamers like extraction shooters. Well. <sighs> We see this all the time where like you know developers want to make a specific type of game but the publishers will say no you have to make this kind of yeah. a game yeah yeah and it like it ruins morale and like ruins a live the game. service game like a live service game yes arcane wanted to make a sing- uh, single player immersive sim style first person game and the the bethesda said no make redfall Microsoft and, said that they wanted to make a live service game. My, yeah, and <laughs> and that was wrong. So again, I think there's plenty of room for a great Destiny and a great Marathon. Uh, they just have to make it great, and it's not going to help by firing a bunch of people, and it's not going to help by uh, like with Destiny two, um deleting half of the game right. making it so you can't play the campaign anymore um fucking uh, making it so that all the stuff you played is invalid and just boosting everybody for no reason uh makes me not want to play the game and uh they, there's plenty of room for them to fuck this up um but that could be said about literally anything about literally any game you know, yeah. you can't just make a game because the genre is popular. You got to make the game good. Well, that's why they're making the game. Because the because genre is popular. popular. Which is funny because here's the twist in all of this. It's not. I still don't know what an extraction shooter is. And I can't name you a single extraction shooter. Uh, I do. Would you like me to explain it? <laughs> Please. So you, uh, you enter a, a sort of survival like world, like yeah. a hub world, like like a I don't want to say open, but you know, like a battle. Think battle royale. Okay. Um, and you get weapons and and items and stuff in this little world. Okay. Uh, and if you survive, you get to leave with the weapons and items. Okay. You extract with the weapons and items. So the more you play it, the more stuff you get. It's like a looter shooter, but uh, player versus player. Okay. Yeah. So the division, Escape from Tarkov, games like that. That does not sound fun. It can be fun. Uh, that also sounds like it could be extremely bad. It, that it, sounds like it could be very easy to mess up, and that sounds yes. like something where Bungie could very easily. It all it takes is one thing. Where like, oh, you leave with your gear, but like the gear you get is blue instead of red. And that could, well, that could screw everything up for everybody. Well, Destiny is one of the best looter shooters. So just use all of the knowledge you've made to, you've accumulated to make one of the best looter shooters and just make it player versus player. I also don't like looter shooters. I think looter I shooters are you don't actually like looter shooters. genuinely 
suck. I See, do not I like do, them. though. I, I think, like I, the, the, the grind to, like, you know, go out there, kill people, and, or, like, go hunting for all this, like, useless crap that is not significantly... But then you get a useful one, and then it's cool, the and you love one the game that is all not of significantly sudden. better or worse than your current gear. Like, it's all this, like... It's con- a lot of junk. It's, you, you have it's to go- constant hunting through junk and junk and junk. All for what? The possibility... For a really cool The possibility that, that you, you may someday get a really cool gold-plated bidet or whatever? Uh, yes. I was I was on the hunt for the Hawk Moon all Destiny Year One. I was I was fucking playing all these missions over and over again trying to get a Hawk Moon, and I never got it until they just let everybody have it after a year. That, that was like a big deal, and it was sounds, so exciting. That sounds so ridiculous. In Borderlands I, One, I early on in the game, I got a shotgun that shot six shots at once. And it shot rockets that were incendiary. So I used to just run around, spin in a circle, shoot once, and it would shoot six rockets in a circle, and everything would light on fire. And I used that gun for the whole rest of Borderlands. That was cool that I got that thing. In Borderlands 2, I got two guns that had the exact same skin texture, the exact same look. They were the same exact gun. The only difference was one of them had acid rounds, and the other one didn't but they were the same fucking gun and they didn't they're like the acid rounds didn't do that much more damage than the regular ass ammunition you got a common gun what's the point of like <laughs> the, the whole game touts is like oh we got like 10 billion guns in the game but you know what will wolf we're gonna give you two of the exact same fucking guns i i am glad that movie did poorly i am glad that movie uh, has got a zero percent of rotten tomatoes because maybe it's finally showing people that no it's not funny the story is not good you know though the gameplay was the only thing that was keeping you interested and that's not even that good i like i like the gameplay in the first one. second one i kind of got bored pretty quickly. let's talk about it right now borderlands movie is bombing because it sucks will was right Borderlands movie premiered as one of the worst review major movies of the year, settling at a 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, good for them. But now the full box office results uh, from its opening weekend are in, and it may also uh, produce one of the largest box office losses of the year compared to its reported budget. The Borms really likes ads. (laughs) The Borderlands movie is said to have made $8.6 million domestically, arriving in fourth place at the U.S. box office. That total expanded to $9.3 million globally, adding just $722,000 in regions where it opened. This is on the back of a budget reported to be between $115 and $145 million between production and marketing. If you've seen it, it's not a cheap film given all the VFX required to bring the explosive game series to life. The studio reported that 60% of its production costs were covered by international ticket pre-sales, but it's unclear how this is supposed to fit into these totals as no additional information past these current numbers has appeared. That total would be around 60 to 70 million if those pre-sales are indeed added at some point point here but still short of its overall budget i don't know who's surprised that the game that the movie is bad uh i'm not uh i'm I'm surprised it's this bad like apparently this is like worse than madam web bad here is a tweet from our friend scootish uh and it i want to note that he's buying tickets for a 10 30 showing at 10 12 <laughs> and there is one seat taken he should have sat right next to that oh he did nice (laughs) (laughs) that is crazy that's it i've never heard of a movie flopping that hard this is a hard flop this is a hard flop yeah like this is a good old-fashioned like nobody wants to see this flop so and uh i hope they learn the right lesson from something like that. Well, I mean, like, I you can see the thinking, like, because video games are, like, the new hot property right now. Last, Last of Us, Fallout, Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, you know. And, like, you know, Borderlands is, for some reason, popular with you fucking kids. Um, <laughs> but I guess people will turn a turn my way, which is good. It means cinema's not dead. But I will say this. Mm-hmm. 9% on Rotten Tomatoes kind of makes me want to see this movie even more that is extremely wait is that nine percent out of a hundred well is audience or or critics Critics. that is crazy yeah that's insane how bad is this movie 
how bad is this movie? I heard some people on TikTok like talk about it, and it it seems just completely irredeemable. Yeah. So I have to see this. When it comes I to have Netflix to, or something. Yeah. I'm not going to a theater. No, to absolutely not. Unless you want to be alone in a theater. Yeah. Sometimes you just need the quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next we got Valve Hero Shooter Deadlock still hasn't been announced, but had sixteen thousand Steam current players this weekend. Yes, Deadlock, a game which is yet to that happen? actually be announced in any official way, shape, or form, had a concurrent player peak of over sixteen thousand players this weekend. At the time of writing, the game's peak is sitting at sixteen thousand nine hundred and forty-seven uh, players on Steam, with four thousand seven hundred and fourteen people playing it at this very moment. At the time of writing of this article, um. The writer tried to install it uh, their, themselves via the little tab on Steam database uh, just now, but was met with a message. An error occurred while launching the game. Game configuration unavailable. Uh, the writer was then taken back to the Steam's app, Steam, the Steam app's main page. So what exactly is Deadlock? It's Valve's hero shooter, but uh, the Half-Life maker still hasn't confirmed that it even exists, let alone that it is in some form of a playable state. Leaks detailing Deadlock started uh, appearing earlier this year via images posted to social media, along with a report from long-term uh, Valve reporter Tyler McVicker. This report claimed that Deadlock was an Overwatch-style third-person hero shooter uh, with closed testing make, uh, taking place. McVicker described the project as having MOBA and tower defense-inspired elements. It's like Valorant, Overwatch, Dota 2, and Team Fortress 2 having a baby, uh, the reporter said in May. It's, this is crazy. 16,000 people is a lot. Yeah. All at once, right? Yeah. Concurrent players. It's so That's a lot to have no footage. Yeah. There's leaked footage from a while ago yeah. that I've seen. Uh, also, I haven't heard about this at all. Like, I knew the game was leaked, mm -hmm. but people are playing it. I gotta, I want to play this game. Yeah. I want to see this game. Uh, I, I know. I'm trying to find it somewhere. I didn't put it in the keep um the verge played deadlock the people in the chat are saying that there's been controversy with the verge i just pulled it up uh uh we played valve's secret new shooter deadlock it's like overwatch dota 2 and team fortress 2 all baked into a pie oh that sounds that looks bad what is that <laughs> that looks bad it's been nearly five years since valve announced a truly new game and counting Valve has still not announced Deadlock, its new hero shooter that takes cues from Overwatch 2, Dota, blah, 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 blah. 20,000 people from trying to play the game, including me, the writer says. Yeah. I am not under NDA. I have signed no contracts and made no verbal agreements. I haven't even clicked through a EULA. Early development build. Deadlock is still early in development. With a lot of temporary art and experimental gameplay, do not share anything about the game with anyone. Okay, well, it sounds like he broke that. <laughs> is that the controversy that he's just talking about it? Because that's stupid. That's a dumb controversy. Yeah, I think. I think yeah, the controversy because he didn't sign a contract. Like, there's nothing written, like in anywhere that said he couldn't talk about it. He just agreed to the. Oh, he didn't even agree to the eula. He's saying. Oh, he just he just he didn't check the box. He just yeah. continued. Uh, this Forbes article says The Verge under fire about for publishing info about Deadlock, Valve's secret shooter. I do not care. I don't. <laughs> I I will not think of The Verge any differently from this point forward. Yeah, no. Eulas don't mean anything. Ignore them completely. Mm -hmm. People are there's twenty thousand people playing the game. People are gonna tweet about it. Yeah. If you're gonna have a beta that's that open. People are going to talk about it, and I think they should talk about it. Uh, Ma not making players sign a gag order is the fucked up part. Yeah, is what I think. Uh, there's an update. Turns out Valve was not fine with me trying to play Deadlock with friends. I've been banned <laughs> from matchmaking. Oh well, feel free to uh, make fun of me in the comments. Now I'm not too upset about that either because yeah. I mean they're allowed to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It is weird though that Valve has this like secret game that like we all know about, but only some people are allowed. It's to very play bizarre. It. Yeah. Fucking uh, when Nintendo did the uh, Nintendo Switch Sports, yeah. uh, they said you cannot show any of this footage for for the for the beta test that they were doing. Yeah. I streamed the whole thing. Fuck them. What are they gonna do? You know. Well, it was like when uh, Suicide Squad was coming out, 
they did like a, a closed beta or whatever. And they said, yeah. don't talk about it. Don't uh, stream it. Don't do nothing. And then when all the bad previews started coming out, they're like, okay, we changed our mind. You got to talk about our game. Yeah. You, it's, it's ridiculous to expect you to put something out into the public and expect them not to talk about it. it I understand doing a closed thing with NDAs and stuff, yeah. but you're going to release it to more than a couple hundred people. There's going to be some conversations happening. I mean, the games industry, though, has like this weird thing about secrecy. Like they are honestly sometimes too secret about like the things that were like, we know you're working on a game. Yeah. You know, things are going to get out. You know, obviously some there are some things you don't want to get out, like uh, spo- like story spoilers and maybe like certain gameplay mechanics and stuff. But like when the Insomniac stuff leaked and we saw the like the pre-alpha Wolverine footage, like the a normal person will just look at it and go, oh, they're working on a Wolverine game. OK, fine. You'll get the one asshole is like, what is this game? It's not even yeah. it looks terrible. Like this is not finished, dumbass. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a reason why they do like media previews sometimes because I think uh, the media should have credentials to be able to distill information differently. Like, yeah. oh, this is a preview. I understand why certain things are the way that they are. Um, and the public might have issues with m- more broader stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I take issue with certain uh, like review embargoes and like there's all these rules that these companies uh, put on on people to yeah. to get them to talk about their stuff the way that they want them to talk about it. And I think that that's fucked up and I don't like it for the most part. I I abide by a lot of them. Like if a company gives me a product and they say, don't talk about it until X date, I'm not happy about it, but I'll abide by it because I want to keep getting products from them. Right. Uh, But there's a lot of, there's been a lot of weird ones that I've seen, like uh, the Asus RG ally embargo was really bizarre. Yeah. Uh, There was a preview version that had its own embargo. Then there was the main retail unit that had its own embargo. And all of the embargo, it had two different embargoes. It didn't say which one was what. And uh, Linus Tech Tips and Dave 2D got different embargoes. They were yeah. allowed to talk about it beforehand. Why? It was just so that they they would they probably would have, they not talk about it otherwise. They probably have like super special relationships with those two specifically. It, and I don't think they were nice up to them about it. Like, I don't think they were, they liked it like in their, in their reviews, they weren't overly glowing, but they, yeah. you know, I think they still gave them good reviews. It seems like they were, they, those people were like, we will not talk about it unless we get to talk about it early. Yeah. <laughs> Cause why else would they give them special treatment? Very bizarre. And I, again, I, I've gotten review embargoes that are like, like for games that are like, uh, don't show past this point yeah. and stuff like that. And I understand that because they don't want story spoilers, but it's also a weird way to, uh, kind of manipulate people into talking about things the way that they want you to talk yeah. about. So, uh, I'm not upset that the verge wrote about their experience playing a game that 16,000 other people were playing yeah. at once. I'm not mad about that. Anyway, uh, I do want to try it though. I would yeah, like to try the game. I, I'm I not mean, really big into hero shooters, but you see, that's funny because I kind of like hero shooters. Have you I, played the Marvel one? Not you the sure? Marvel one. The last one I played was Overwatch one, and I enjoyed that a lot. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, I know. Me too. You don't like multiplayer? I don't games. like. Multi- we know why I like because it was simple. It's you know, simple and kind of mindless. Pick a character, go out there, do your thing. You know, it's simple. It's old school. Like that, I can get behind that. Uh, yeah, you should try the Marvel one. Yeah, I maybe like I that. should try the Marvel one. Spider screen. I thought, it was, I thought I had a virus. <laughs> uh, Suicide Squad causes 41% loss, excuse me? Yep. Everyone's favorite reoccurring topic on this show. We mentioned it several times already. It's the gift that keeps on giving. The failure uh, of, uh, <laughs> of Suicide Squad. <laughs> Uh, today on Warner Brothers Discovery's Q2 earnings call, CEO and man with the most punchable face, David Zaslav, 
uh, and president of global streaming and games at JB Peretti uh, responded to a question about the strategic value of games to Warner Brothers. Given the recent uneven performance, the company had just reported gaming revenue was down 41% year over year due to the underperformance of Suicide Squad killed the Justice League compared to Hogwarts Legacy's massive success last year. Does WB see games as a core part of its portfolio? Uh, seems like the answer is yes. Both Zaslav and Peretti explained that they wanted to grow the gaming business, especially in the free-to-play space, uh, where Peretti says uh, can help balance out some of the up and downs of the cyclical console industry. It's part of why WB acquired Player First Games, the developers of Multiverses, earlier this year. Zaslav followed up by noting that not only did WB want to keep leveraging its 11 studios, but that there's also a lot of interest in among others in coming to take advantage of some of that IP for gaming, um, which they're looking at. Uh, I won't go into both of those, uh, their answers because they're long, but long story short, they're going to keep making games with their 11 studios, but also they are opening up the, uh, the options to allow other outside developers and publishers to license their games and like make games based on their ip thank god yes i think they have not been doing uh (laughs) for themselves no i mean hogwarts legacy was a success but like that was like a lucky fluke honestly they got some cool ips and i would yeah they have some of the best ips in the world other publishers uh uh do something with anything i bet microsoft's gonna jump on this oh 100 percent they're going to be like, well, Sony's got Marvel games. Well, we're going to have DC games because nothing ever goes wrong when DC tries to catch up to Marvel. Hey, that actually would make a lot of sense. Yeah. They might try to do something after uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah. They might try to purchase some weird IP from Warner Brothers. Yeah. Uh, hey, that's not a bad lesson to learn from the failure of Suicide Squad. Yeah. That uh, we can't do this, <laughs> and other people would be better at it. Um, is that it? Is that all the news? Uh, yeah, that's it. Tweet of the week! Tweet of the week! Tweet of the week! This is from uh, Sinara Archaeology Department. Does Willem Dafoe play Final Fantasy? A Reddit user had an issue while playing Crisis Core FF7 Re- make rebirth whatever and asked how to resolve it however people noticed defoe's face in the reflection of their screen and concluded that the user must be the famous actor willem defoe <laughs> and you can barely see it but right there yeah it looks like willem defoe is taking the picture of his steam deck he's got a little cute little uh yeah chicken little thumb stick uh that would be a great story. that would be awesome if Willem Dafoe not only was a Final Fantasy fan, but played it on a Steam Deck. Yeah. Unfortunately, people have pointed out it's probably just Willem Dafoe on the guy's t-shirt. Mm. And I don't know what t-shirt or what pose. Yeah, like would be that. <laughs> I don't like where would you get a Willem Dafoe t-shirt? Uh, well, I just Google image search Willem Dafoe t-shirt, and there's plenty. Okay. I want to see if there was, like... Oh, wait, is it literally this shirt? Did we just find the shirt? Oh, don't tell me. No, I don't know. No, I don't think so. I was trying to find the exact pose on his shirt. Yeah. Maybe we could find it, but... uh, I mean, I like to imagine that he's a big Steam Deck fan. Yeah. And also has a Reddit account. Yes. Both. Uh, all right. Now we'll talk to you guys real quick. Yes. Let's start off with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. I uh, downloaded the Ubisoft launcher because I want to download um, Outlaws. No, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Prince of Persia. Okay. When I go like this, it's scrolling. Mm, that sucks. <laughs> oh, I think I, I added gyro so that the right stick. Yeah, yeah, right stick. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, we got notifications. Uh, Rock and Val, thanks for the gift. Is sub to Sarity. Original Spiff, thanks for the twenty-seven months. I'm coming in late, but did the lads cover Valve supporting the ally in the future? No. Uh, that is a like 
late breaking thing. I just found it. Okay. Um, so what Valve said was, uh, it'll support the ROG Ally with its Steam Deck operating system <gasps> once Valve is happy with it. Oh, that means <laughs> never. That means they're never going to. Add, the, the quote is adding support for extra. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, Valve's latest Steam OS notes said that it had support for extra ROG Ally keys. Oh. Um, the note about the ROG Ally keys is related to third party device support for Steam OS. The team is continuing to work on adding support for additional handhelds on Steam OS. That doesn't mean that Asus will officially bless Valve's installer or sell the Ally with Steam OS, of course. Uh, and it's not like Valve is suggesting it'll offer Steam OS for rival handhelds anytime soon either. Valve is making steady progress. Um, but it uh, isn't ready to run out of the box yet. So, I mean, again, Bazite runs great. Yeah. It's like, you know, an op- like, it, it's, it's an initiative that people just made. And it, it must have yeah. been, I mean, I don't want to say it was easy, but it must have been relatively simple for them to get running on the RG Ally. So I'd imagine yeah. it'd be pretty easy for Valve to do it if they wanted to. Well, I mean, like the whole point of the Steam machines like many years ago was that like, you can just al- upload the operating system to any like Windows device, turn yeah. it into a Steam machine, and go from there. I imagine like they want to do a similar thing with Steam Deck and like other portable gaming systems. Yeah, and they've expressed interest in doing that, and yeah. they haven't done really anything mm-hmm. to support to to back that up. Uh, in fact, their wording is very bizarre. Yeah, uh, they they. they There's some hoops people have to kind of jump through in order to get uh, Steam OS onto these devices. Yeah, uh, but it runs great, so it's po- it it there's a possibility that, that yeah it could be relatively easy for Valve to do. But uh, I don't trust Valve to ship things like they they never ship things. They yeah, never, they never they always work on a bunch of stuff and then cancel it. So or it takes forever to actually come out. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not a putting too much stock in it um oh and mecha dragon 25 months hey bros it was great meeting you at long island retro this past weekend sorry for my awkwardness i wasn't having a good day that day to be honest but it is still an honor also will you owe me a comic now uh see you next year next year (laughs) he comes every year yeah thank you for joining us dragon uh, maybe they could ship the ally with SteamOS when it is officially. Uh, I doubt it. I mean, they could do a dual boot thing. That'd be cool. Yeah, they might. They'd probably have to pay a licensing though, which is like Valve makes it seem like they're cool with other companies like releasing. Uh, uh... they make it seem like they're they're comfortable SteamOS being on other devices and people selling those yeah. devices. But I think that there is a weird licensing thing with Steam OS. There's a part of it that is not open right. source. Um, all right. Last week's Wolf Den. Uh, yes. According to you, comment. Uh, Charlie Fenn, can we get Will a new job as a QA tester at these PC handheld places? I would feel much better about buying these things knowing he has tried his best to break them. I'm not even trying that hard. I'm just like <laughs> trying to do normal gamer stuff. Literally just use yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, this is Alex, I think is this person's <laughs> name. Do you think they will ever release any mainline Pokemon games on Nintendo Switch Online? I think they're going to do something weird. Yeah. They might make them their own app. They might make it its own subscription. It's mm-hmm. going to be definitely something weird. Yeah. Wolfden Dad, oh, 8957. Boy. Wow, this video is trending faster than GameStop stock did. He knows something about Oh, wow, culture. look at that. He's hip. Hope it doesn't crash the same way. Hashtag Wolfden Dad. Yeah. There you go. Well, everybody take his financial advice. <laughs> Snake Eater Gaming says, I remember being tricked into the magazine subscription when I was a kid. Maybe 12? What the fuck? I really didn't care about magazines and I didn't have enough money to take advantage of the discounts the subscription offers. I stopped going to GameStop because I was tired of being pressured every time I went. One good memory I have with GameStop, though, I was buying Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. Of course he was. And the cashier said, hey, you know, this isn't the full game, right? It's like a demo that lasts a couple hours. Come back in a couple months 
for the full game to release. He saved me a few bucks. I liked that. He should have sold you a used version uh, so that yeah. you could return it. So, I mean, good that he yeah, told you he, like, that. warned you. Probably yeah. sick of people returning it. Yeah. We had a guy who used to come in. I called him the British guy because he had a British accent for right. some reason. Uh, he would come in every week because you had a seven-day return window for used stuff. So he would just return a used game and buy a new one. It was like a free rental for him. Right. Or I guess he paid $60 for one game and then uh, kept returning and buying yeah, it yeah. over and over again. Uh, and then one day he didn't come in for a month and I still gave him a new because I don't care. Yeah. He just returned it. I don't <laughs> give a shit. Mark Zmz says, started playing original Assassin's Creed this week on the deck, and then you guys get to talking about it on the backlog. That's so funny. Oh, my God. I, I hope that. you enjoy it. Anyway. All right. I wouldn't trust rando devices pre-installed with Steam, with my Steam credential. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what was it? The I and the O was like launching with a weird yeah. uh, version of Steam, and that uh is a little weird. Yeah, I think that's why. I think that's the part of the Steam OS that is uh not open is the Steam client, which I think yeah. is the part where you put all your credentials. Oh, uh, five dollars over on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I missed. Amazing Gonzo with the five Australian dollars, I think. Oh, crikey. Unrelated. You got, you see the guy who kept saying, this reminds me of the time my dad dot, dot, dot. Uh, that would be Anthony Mele or something. He went into Woodstream. Poor Wood didn't know how to deal with it. You deal <laughs> with it with a block. I think he's banned in somebody's. Uh, I have shared ban info with Wood and Jackson. Yeah. And I think he's banned in one of their streams. It takes a lot to get banned here. Um, I mean, look, they found a way, so, like, props on them. No, no, no. They're not banned here. It takes a lot oh. to get banned here. On here. Okay. Which is why he's not banned. Got also, it. he's giving us money. I don't want to ban yeah. him. He's giving us money. <laughs> I can fucking deal with him saying dumb shit every once in a while. Uh, All right. Steam also probably has your credit card and the like. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think people aren't. I think people are comfortable with Steam having their credit card information. Yeah. It's the other fringe uh, companies that are making hardware that uh, they're worried about. Yeah. I make it good. Never a little quiet over here. Problem is, I was reading the chat already, I think. <laughs> Uh, didn't The Verge piss off Nintendo sometime back too? I mean, everybody pisses off Nintendo. A lot of people pissed off Nintendo to the point where they just don't give games yeah. early anymore. I know, um, not, was it Polygon? I think Polygon pissed off Nintendo and Eurogamer pissed off Nintendo. Yeah. Everyone's pissed off Nintendo. Bob, don't forget Star War, Star Fox will take advantage of the Super FX3 chip. We were talked about that before. With uh, it's the same chip that's powering Doom. I thought this was speculation, or like they wanted to do this. They want to do it, right? That or did I read it that wrong? Randall Linden is involved with the Lunar Rescue Regime. Uh. Uh. Many people have asked if Star Fox, Star Fox EX, it will get an update with the Super FX3 chip. I think this is a custom firmware or a custom. Yeah. Like a guy's making a ROM that will work on this hardware. Yes. Basically. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. It'll get rumble. Star Fox EX. Is Seems a, like. it's like an updated version of Star Fox. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So it is a thing. It's just a fan thing that yeah. uh, hopefully won't get shut down. It may have been Polygon I was thinking of. Thanks, Bob. Oh, no problem. I forgot what they did. Have you started playing that Superman game, nope. Will? Nope. <laughs> you have to bust out a PlayStation 2? I do have or... to bust out a PlayStation 2. Favorite movie adaptation of a game? 
Goldeneye. <laughs> oh, move! Oh, the other way around. I got it backwards. Mortal Kombat, nineteen ninety-five. Still, honestly, movie adaptation. I don't know. It's hard because, like, they're they're not good. <laughs> Yeah, the, I mean, I like, you, like you get ones that are like close. You get ones that are like kind of okay. Like you know, Tomb Raider was kind of okay. Um, Mario Super Mario Bros was kind of okay. I kind of liked Sonic. Sonic was kind of we okay, we yeah. we watched it and I was like, that was all right. Yeah, but I think they did a pretty decent job. Yeah, and I want to. I don't know any other ones that I. That the only I, one, like honestly, the only one I would say is like good. Is the original Mortal Kombat one. Okay. But like other than that, I can't really think of anything that I would say like is like genuinely good. Um Honestly, I would say the way like Fallout and Last of Us, Last of Us are going, like TV might be the way to go. You know? Yeah. Sonic is easily rewatchable. I gotta watch the second one. Not yeah. the Mario movie. I liked the Mario movie, but um I don't I felt differently about the Mario movie. Like it was a good movie, but like uh, uh, I, I don't think I enjoyed myself as much as I did with the Sonic movie. Yeah, I was more interested in what was going to happen in the Sonic movie. Well, because I think the Mario movie, like, it, it's for kids. It's, it's for kids. Oh, for I mean, kids. the Sonic movie is also for kids. Like the Mario movie, I think tried, to, you know, it tried to be the game without the gameplay element, like. I would much like with the Sonic movie, there was other things happening. They added a whole like they added extra like plots and like characters and stuff to try yeah. and like expand the story to like make it for a movie. Whereas the Mario movie was literally just the cutscenes from the game. Yeah, I felt more uh targeted towards with the Sonic movie. Yeah. I felt I didn't feel like I know it's for kids, but I didn't feel like it was explicitly for kids. With the Mario movie, I was like, oh, this is not for me. Yeah. And it's like the bad kind of for kids where it's like they think kids are dumb and they're like try to pander to like mm. the lowest common denominator. Jim Slatter Snup Slatter Sup says Detective Pikachu was kind of dope. I forgot oh, about yeah, Detective Pikachu. Oh yeah, that was good. That movie was good. That was good. That was a good movie. Yeah. I think so I want to change that's, my answer. That's two. It's Mortal Kombat <laughs> and Detective Pikachu. Two opposite ends of the spectrum. Uh, Bob Will, would you prefer media to actually play the game or not? What are you talking about? I heard they're not letting the Yakuza staff play the game. So this is a thing, like, I guess there's a Yakuza TV show on Amazon now, like a dragon. Oh, I understand. Yeah, and they're not letting people play the game. Um, Apparently now that's a thing in Marvel. Kevin Feige is telling, like, the writers of, like, the movies and TV shows, you don't have to read the comics. I don't know how I feel about it. Here's my take on it. I don't think you have to be a fan of something in order to make an adaptation of it. Tim Burton didn't read comic books growing up. Everybody loves his Batman movies. Um, there's a, I know there's other examples, of course. I can't think of them right now. Uh, but the point is, I think it's possible to make a good adaptation of something without having pre-existing knowledge of... Oh, uh, Tony Gilroy doesn't like Star Wars, and he made Rogue One and Andor. Hmm. And like those, everybody loves those. The point is, like, you don't have to be a fan of something in order to make a good version of it. You just have to understand the assignment and take what you're doing seriously. I think not having pre-existing knowledge is one thing. Actively trying to tell people to not look to the source material does create a problem because that kind of creates a disconnect with what you're trying to do. Yeah. You know, I understand you want to do your own thing, but like there needs to be some sort of adherence to like what came before. I think it depends. Um, I think that the person create the, the person who's headlining the thing who's making the, the, yeah. the director or a writer or whatever, uh, should have a baseline knowledge of what's going right. Um, I think that if they then want to do something different with certain characters, those people who are playing those characters don't have to research it. Right. If if they're, it's intended to do something different, then they want to do something different. Well, I know for uh, Fallout, um, the creators have played 
fallout. Like yeah. they played the game, but they told the actors they didn't have to mm. because they were going to tell a different story. That's totally reasonable. Yeah. I think that's totally reasonable. Yeah. Uh, in the case of Borderlands, <laughs> I heard that uh, there is nothing about guns at all. And that's like the whole. That's the whole, whole game point. is all yeah. the wacky, crazy guns that you can do. Yeah. And you're gonna make a whole movie about Borderlands and not have cool, weird guns. Yeah. Apparently, Craig Mazin, who is the showrunner for The Last of Us, was the screenwriter for the Borderlands movie. But after a cer- I forget after how many rewrites he said, "Take my name off mm. this movie." I did hear about that. Yeah. There's something else in the chat I want. I also apparently like Eli Roth was the director of the movie, but uh, the reshoots were directed by Tim Miller, who two completely different mm. styles. Tim Miller is the Deadpool. Deadpool, Deadpool yes. one, yeah. Very so. strange. Uh, somebody brought something up in the chat that. Uh, talking about it was something we were talking about on screen the other day oh did you get yourself an astrobot controller no uh i got too many controllers right uh ign wrote an article about the astrobot controller okay and uh they said that the touchpad has a screen on it or it animates oh and nowhere else does it say that anywhere on the internet yeah so uh that's weird I think that they are wrong. Right. They they must be wrong. They must be wrong. Yeah. yeah. Cuz otherwise it would cost a lot more than it does. Yeah, and there would be a much bigger stink about the yeah. fact that it animated. So, that's weird. Um anyway, did you want to open that thing? Oh, yeah, I probably should. Uh this is the last thing we'll do and then, yeah. we'll, then we'll leave. So, this was supposed to be done last week, but Bob didn't go to the PO box cuz he sucks. Um <laughs> I hey, I went. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't think Dark Spider Dave is in the chat. So frequent commenter in the chat, Dark Spider Dave, actually has a very good YouTube channel uh, going over action figures. You should check it out. Was at San Diego Comic-Con, and he was able to oh. hook me up with the McFarlane Toys uh, DC Superpowers. What's the official title? Oh, my God. Uh, black, white, black and white accent edition of Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. That's really so cool. This you, is, you got your camera right now. Oh, hey, over here. So this is from... Uh, Hold it Mc... close to your face, because then it'll be fun. Yeah. This is from McFarlane's uh, Superpowers subline of DC Toys. The Accent Edition, what they do is they take the pre-existing figures and they put them in black and white, except for, like, one color. So they've done, like, you know, Superman, but, like, is in black and white, but, like, his cape is still red. Mm-hmm. Um, they've done, like, Aquaman, but, like, the yellow is still on there and it actually looks really cool. I see that he is in black and white, but his S is in red. Yes. So if I can get the, this is one of 5,100 and I will not be reselling this. I will be opening this up and looking at the toys. I was going to say, I noticed you are opening it. Yeah. Cause I want to <laughs> see it. There they are. Yeah. That's them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. They look really nice. Where's my camera? Uh, hold it like next to your face. There it is. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. See right there. That's cool. Yeah. This is really cool. I'm going to keep the box like the nearby. The box is cool. Yeah. The box is arguably cooler than, yeah. than the action figures. Let me see. I mean, well, because the thing is like, those are supposed to be like the, um, the they, action, look, they the, look like old action Well, figures. yeah, because Superpowers is um, a line from the 80s. Uh, and McFarlane brought it back to be like a younger skewing give me the next. toy line. Because like, this is the toy line with uh, vehicles and stuff. They're not supposed to be like the they're not these. They're not the seven inch, like highly detailed ones. But people like these because, you know, people grew up with superpowers. So now I have, I finally have superpowers toys. Uh, I'm so opening that, a thing. Thank you, Dave. Uh, uh, what are you opening? This is the 8 bit do uh, retro mechanical number pad. Ooh. That we got a while ago and yes. I never opened it uh, because I already have a number pad and I wasn't going to use this. Uh, the number pad that I use to switch scenes mm-hmm. just decided it didn't want to work anymore. <laughs> so uh, after this stream's over, I'm going to try to set this up. Uh, this will this is wireless and I'm hoping that I could set macros on it so that I can do the same thing that I do with the glorious number pad uh, to switch scenes and stuff. And here it is. And it clicks just like that other one. And it's actually a calculator too. 
Oh yeah, I saw that. You can just put it in the calculator mode. That's convenient. <laughs> How do you? I don't know. Oh, cow. I also saw three plus three is six. Oh, that's good to know. I also saw eight bit two is um they they're having new colorways for the uh the Pro Two controllers. It's like. It's like a neon green and the same blue that that Xbox controller just came out in. Really? Yeah. Oh. Oh, like the jungle green. Like yeah. The there was an SNES, not an SNES. There was a, a Nintendo 64 at Long Island Retro Gaming Expo in like one of those neon colors. HDMI modded. Guess how much you wanted for it. Wait, wait. What was HDMI modded? One of those like neon colored uh, N64s. Oh, yeah. They're expensive. How much do you think? HDMI modded? Yeah. $400. More than $400? $500? $600? $700? $700 for, uh, I think it was the neon blue HDMI modded N64. So it's a little hard to do the HDMI it's, mod. Yeah. Get a Super 64. Yeah, it's I was so going to say, just yeah. Super 64. Uh, they have a uh, purple of, of, of the 8-bit do also. Here's, yes. Here's blue. And green. I just think it's hysterical. Oh, we I, have the green. The green. Uh, do we have? Well, oh yeah, we, we have did. This one. In green. That's like a different one. Yeah. I also think that's a, like a darker green. The one they showed off is like a brighter green. This look. Is this not the same? Um. But yeah, I just think it's funny. Like they, like all hot off the heels of uh, Microsoft with their neon blue, their translucent blue. It produces like, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we got. We literally got. Yeah. This so, but that's fun. Translucent colors are back, baby. All right, we're done. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den and youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you hate make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps with placement on all those respective platforms. I'll be live Thursday. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I uh, might not have a video this week. I don't know. <gasps> Suck it, Either this week or ne next week is not going to have a video. Uh I'm working on something. I'm working on a, a video. I just uh, taken a while, and I'm I'm uh, I slept all day. <laughs> I picked up our parents from the airport. I came home, ate something, and then just fell asleep on the couch for like two hours. Sounds, sounds nice. It's really hard, really yeah. hard life of of a YouTuber. Uh, go say hello to Jess. Uh, she is streaming Mario and Luigi. Uh, I'll see you Thursday. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.